Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Drew Neal on the line, and he's founder of Solutionary Ventures. Drew, welcome to the show. Hey, Adam, thanks for having me today. I'm looking forward to our conversation. All right, Drew. So uh, excited about today's conversation. So we will be talking, of course, about Solutionary Ventures and diving into your background as well. And really, I mean, the topic, so help, you're helping people scale their businesses. Um, that's a big, big topic on uh, on this show because why a lot of business owners, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of executives listen in. So excited to get your input on this. Um, but before we do that, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Drew, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Drew, what mission matters to you? Yeah, well, Solutionary Ventures is committed to dignifying people with value by reimagining uh, culture and bringing that into the corporate workspace so that we can have much more sustainable models um, through human-centered design and really understanding that uh, healthy culture is really going to transform the world. And we believe that our products and services, um, our founders, leadership, if you will, should be aligned with values that are going to uh, dignify the whole world with value. And so we're committed to really supporting, inspiring, um, but also architecting and building with um, you know, founders and, and organizations that are impact oriented, uh, that understand their why and want to have real sustainable results, not just for their user, but also for their human capital, um, all their uh, stakeholders, if you will. And so it's an honor to kind of bring a fresh perspective and help people to architect from the inside out products and services that can be beneficial to everyone around them. It's awesome. I, I love bringing mission-based and mission-centered entrepreneurs on the line to share their 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 mission, the reason behind it, and really how, what they're doing out there in the marketplace to make uh, to make it better. So great having you on. And I guess just to get us kicked off, um, like, so how did you get on this path, really, to wanting to not just found this company, but to maximize human potential? Like, where did all this start for you? Well, you know, I have a a story of you know. Uh, of overcoming that's similar to most of us that are, you know, positioned with a growth mindset. You know, we've all had to overcome, you know, the deck of cards we were dealt, the mindsets that have been handed down, the the legacy stories of our families, the blind spots in our own development, and and the difficulties that come with that. And and part of my journey and story, um, you know, includes a, a childhood, you know, raised in uh, a poverty according to America's standards and, and um, you know, and being really a, a part of the social experiment of what I call the education system today <laughs> mm-hmm. and some of the opportunities and that come with that um, that are not beneficial uh, socially and uh, some of the dynamics that are there. And so, you know, was mercilessly bullied and just, you know, kind of put behind the eight ball in a lot of circumstances in my growth and development in my teenage years. And I had to make some really, really powerful choices about understanding how I would relate to the world. And ultimately, as I began my career, I began to realize that this, this process is something that everyone is on. Everyone can relate to the fact that you don't get to choose everything about your circumstances um, you know, when you are in your growth and in your development, but you can choose about to how you respond. You can be responsible for yourself in the process. And so as I began to, um, to work in the workforce, I had to learn how to apply myself in that way and, and grew very rapidly in those environments because of my drive uh, to want to not just succeed from a performance standpoint, but understand how I related with the whole because ultimately, a lot of the environments I'd been in said I didn't relate. Um, I was kind of square peg in a round hole. And so I began to understand that there was, a, there was an architecture, there was a pattern, there was a rhythm, there was a reason why humans behaved the way that they did. And then if I could understand that architecture, that I could build that same architecture in a way that would be beneficial uh, for everyone. So I had an early start in my 20s in the nonprofit world, did a lot of humanitarian work, you know, 
and just opened up, you know, work in over 20 nations. And ultimately, my consultancy started with nonprofits in my 20s, helping them to understand um, how to be sustainable and um, to get greater buy-in from donors and a bunch of different things. And and so uh, as I began to cut my teeth, I began to realize there was a lot of value to bring in the marketplace um, when it came to valuing humans and understanding that this isn't just about, you know, the end user. This isn't just about um, our investors. Um, this actually is about every single person impacted, which includes our workforce. And I began to realize we were, we were about to go through a massive transition in the corporate world of needing to realize how to value every stakeholder and create cultures inside of the workplace that would allow for every person to thrive um, that was involved. And of course, part of that also um, was going to require a higher level of social and emotional intelligence by the corporation. And uh, and so as I began to give myself uh, to the process, the value that was adding in, in the workplace was pretty remarkable. The results were impactful, and we started seeing some transformation that was very inspiring. And so it's uh, it's grown and grown and grown, and and now we've uh, had over you know over 800 founders have gone through our processes, and 250 companies consulted, and and we've had a lot of impact um, in the corporate space, bringing dignity to humans. Man, that's a it's a great story, and it's a great testament of um of I, I love when an entrepreneur has an idea that they, maybe they're trying to solve a problem or figure out a cha- like how to make something better for themselves, and in turn create a business out of it, and then go on in turn to help others, you know, learn and to um to benefit from the teaching that they on you know on their own path um really learn so i think it's awesome i think like solutionary ventures just has a great story um i'm so i'm curious as you've done and you know worked with all these different clients and and as you work with all these different companies are is there anything that you know kind of surprised you along the way on that journey are there any things uh, there's some takeaways you're like man i didn't think that was going to happen but that did like what what was what kind of surprised you on that journey so far well, I think the the narrative is that everyone is so committed to the the bottom line, you know, the finances, mm-hmm. right? And 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 the narrative is true that we want peak performance out of our workforce and we want the bottom line to be true. But when you get people into one-on-one conversations and everyone starts to get honest and authentic, you start mm-hmm. to realize that everyone's exhausted by that commitment. And I think there's a real opportunity for us to have that is um, surprising. Honest that's why I asked that question. By the way, that that's that's a great one. That once you get people behind closed doors, and once they like, there's more to it, right? There's so much more to it, and it, yeah. of course, it's complex, right? There's multi-dimensional yeah. things happening here, you know, at the at the structure level, at the mm-hmm. at the the business development level, at the HR level, and there's there's humans and technology and processes, and there is an intersection here. But when we start talking about the dignity of humans, everyone's dissatisfied with the experience they have in corporate America. No one is raving about their experience in their career saying, well, I did, you know, my path was perfect. I would do it all over again exactly the same way, and it was it, 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 it was so good by me. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, no one's saying that. Everyone's been eaten up, chewed up, spit out by this machine. And, you know, there's a whole generation coming into the workforce right now that they will not give themselves to that process. Mm-hmm. And they are introducing core values that are going to require companies to re-engineer their culture, to re-engineer their why, and to become much more human-centered in their approach, in their processes, in their products, in their services. And executives got to make some really, really hard decisions right now about how they're going to engage so that they can sustain the workforce through this massive transition. And so it's very interesting times. Mm, That is interesting. So as we go into, so for context for everybody that is uh, listening to this or recording this in, you know, mid-December 2022, as we go into, you know, 2023, you know, out, uh, you know, past the pandemic, things are open, like we're finally getting to some type of normalcy, in, in my opinion, um, what are some of the things that should be on the minds of uh, some of the executives and business owners that are, that are listening to this today? Well, I think we, we can no longer chalk up 
you know, social and emotional intelligence as the responsibility of our HR departments. There is a demand on executive leadership right now to be able to offer a dignifying human experience to every person that we sit at a table with, sit across the desk from us, and this is no longer a department's responsibility. Um, this is a human responsibility. This is a leadership responsibility. And, and it really, it really requires us to, to assess, um, who we're hiring, what skill sets they have, who we're promoting into these leadership positions because, um, ultimately, you know, technology, you know, it, it used to be that technology was the hard thing to acquire and it was the competitive edge. You know, or may say it was capital was the competitive edge previously. And if you had a lot of money, well, there's, there's tons of money now and there's tons of technology now. It's not disproportionately setting people apart as it did previously. And I really believe the new competitive edge in the market is your team and mm-hmm. is the culture of which they, they operate in. Um, because competency at the social and emotional level is really, really hard to find. Um, technology is replacing hard skill, and we're realizing that soft skill is the new thing we need to learn how to measure at the next level and to be able to implement and bring um, these dignifying experiences um, to our team. Because a team that's connected, who also has competency, um, will be able to perform disproportionately to teams that don't. And so who cares if you have the technology? Who cares if you're funded? What experience do you offer people? And I really believe the new premium experience is human experience. Hmm. Well said. Well, Drew, I know we just uh, we just uh, hit the tip of the iceberg on on your content and also what you have to offer and what you're what you're doing for clients. But we're about out of time for this particular episode. But I want my audience to be able to follow up and not just follow your journey, follow your content, and to connect with you and your team. Um, what's the best way for people to connect? Well, you know, I, I think these are big conversations and that are opening up, you know, remarkable opportunities. And so, um, drewneal.com is a, is a portal where you can gain more content and understand, um, what it means to introduce these things, whether through workshops or through keynote, um, live speaking events. I'm doing a lot of this on the front end to really help create language for people because the gap is there, but people don't have a lot of words for it. And so if you just go to drewneal.com, you can see some great um, information. You can get some other videos and get a, a little more of a feel of some of the things that um, are particular to this process of growing a more human-centered culture uh, that will create this new competitive edge in the marketplace. Wonderful. And we'll, we'll put all that information in the show notes so that our audience can just uh, head right, click on the links and head right on over and check out your website and also your work. And speaking of the audience, if this is the first time you've engaged with a Mission Matters episode or engaged with the platform, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and having them share their mission, the reason behind their mission, and really how they're adding value to the marketplace. And if that's the type of content that sounds interesting, or fun or engaging to you, hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Drew, again, really, it has been a pleasure. Thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks, Adam, for having me today. I appreciate it.